Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you the difference between static websites and dynamic websites. Nowadays, there's so many different ways that you can build a website and everybody is vying for your attention. So if you were to go up to 10 developers and ask the question, how do I build my next website? You're probably going to get 10 different answers. And not only that, for each answer, there's going to be like five or 10 different frameworks that'll help you do it. So the problem nowadays isn't building a site. The problem is deciding how do I build my site? And I think for a lot of people, especially people who aren't like full on developers, it can be a little paralyzing. Like when there's all of these options and everybody's telling you different ways to do different things, it can almost discourage you from building a website in the first place. So the question becomes, how do you weed through all of these different voices and these different people pulling you in different directions, telling you to do different things? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you a first step to being able to decide how to build your website. And I'm going to teach you the difference between the two main types of websites, static sites and dynamic sites. Now, when we're talking about static and dynamic, we're talking about the basics. Like this is some high level stuff. I'm not going to go into like different frameworks and different things. I'm just going to tell you like the two basic types of websites that you can create. And so when you're trying to create a website, your first decision should be, should I create a static site or should I create a dynamic site? And I'm going to give you a little insight into making that decision. A website is a collection of different files. Normally it's like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, maybe some images, maybe some other files like PDFs. And all those files are stored on something called a web server. So when a user wants to access your website, their computer goes off to the web server and the web server gives them a website. It gives them all these different files and then those files can be turned into what you see on your web browser. Now in a dynamic site, that web page gets created on the web server. So when you go to that web server to get the web page, the web server actually creates that page for you. So it takes little pieces of HTML, it sticks them together, maybe it takes an image, puts it in here. It takes that entire website and builds it for you. And in certain cases, it'll change the website depending on who's accessing it. So on a website like Facebook, for example, when I go on Facebook, I get all of my information from my friends and all that stuff. And I get my profile. When you go on Facebook, you get your profile, your information from all your friends. We're visiting the same website, but we're getting different information. And the way you can do that is by building the website on the web server. So the web server doesn't build the website until someone wants it. And then they can figure out like, okay, who wants these pages? And they'll use that information to make the site. In a static website, all of those web pages are created offline. And so somebody on a computer somewhere creates all those web pages and then takes that finished product, uploads them to the web server. And then when you want to access that website, the web server just gives you those pre-built pages. It doesn't figure out who you are. It doesn't customize the pages in any way. It just gives you the pages. And so everyone's getting the same content from that web server. Now, neither way of building or using your site is better than the other. There's a bunch of advantages to using dynamic sites. And there's also a bunch of advantages to using static sites. Now, a good example for explaining the difference between static and dynamic websites would actually be ordering a pizza. Now, whenever you want to eat pizza, aside from making the pizza yourself, there's actually two things that you can do. The first thing you can do is go to the store and buy a pre-made frozen pizza. The second thing you can do is call up a pizza shop and give them your order and then they'll make the pizza for you and they'll deliver it to you or you go pick it up. And actually these two ways of getting pizza are synonymous with the two ways that we can serve our websites. Buying a frozen pizza is a lot like using a static website. Those frozen pizzas are pre-made. They were made long before you bought them, probably frozen, and then you bought them from the grocery store. And so when you bought that pizza, you just got whatever was there. You didn't customize it. You didn't tell them what you wanted. The pizza wasn't made especially for you. It was just kind of there. When you order pizza from a pizza shop, the pizza doesn't start getting made until you order it. And so once you call the pizza shop, you tell them what you want. They can customize the pizza for you as much as you want, and they don't start making it until you tell them. And that's the same as a dynamic web server. So the dynamic web server doesn't start making the web page. It doesn't start building it until you actually want it. So obviously there's different advantages to ordering pizza those different ways. When you custom order the pizza, it takes a little bit longer, but usually it tastes a little bit better. 
and you can get exactly what you want. When you buy a frozen pizza, it doesn't take as long to get, you can just cook it on your own and it's a lot more convenient. So if you're getting bored talking about static versus dynamic sites, you can just start talking about different types of pizza. And so the question shouldn't be which one is better, static or dynamic sites. The question should be which one is better for my particular use case. And I'm gonna give you some pros and cons to using dynamic versus static websites, and it'll kind of help you to decipher the differences a little bit. Static websites are extremely fast. I mean, super fast. If you're using like an HTTP server, an HTTP server can hand out web pages left and right with no problem whatsoever. And so it's really easy for a website that is static to handle lots of traffic. Like if you have millions and millions of people visiting your website, it's still not gonna tax the server as much as it would on a dynamic site. Static websites are also really secure. I mean, you're not doing anything on the server. You're not accepting any sort of user input generally. And so there's really nothing for a hacker to hack, right? There's no backend, there's no data. It's just like what you see is what you get. They're also really easy to host. And generally, if you're hosting like some complex dynamic website, you have to do all sorts of server configuration. You have to set up the servers and maintain the servers. And if you're using a database, that adds another entire layer of complexity to it because you got to worry about maintaining the database and how is your data flowing between the database and the application. It's kind of a mess. Static websites are also super cheap to host. In fact, if you use something like GitHub Pages, you can host your static website completely free. But there are some cons. Static websites are very rigid. You know, it's basically just a static file on your web server. What's there is what's there. It doesn't change. It can't adapt to different situations. It can't be customized for different users. Static websites also can't be updated very quickly. If I make a Facebook post, I post it out and then it shows up on all my friends' news feeds immediately. Can't do something like that with the static website because all the code is hard coded onto the files. Static websites also aren't good at taking input from any users and so it makes your websites a little less interactive if you're just using a static site. Now let's talk about dynamic websites. Here's some of the pros. The first is that they're dynamic and flexible, obviously. Dynamic websites can change in the blink of an eye and also they can change depending on which user is accessing them something that's super powerful and makes for a great user experience. They're also capable of interacting with databases. Now, you can interact with databases in a static site, but it's a little more complicated than it is with a dynamic site. With a dynamic site, you just have your database set up and then your server can communicate with it and they can kind of work together to give the user the best experience. Not to mention you can store, update, retrieve, delete information from that database on the fly. Dynamic websites are also more interactive and so users can interact with the website and they can affect the experience of other users. So like I said before, if I post a Facebook status, that gets pushed out to all my Facebook friends. So I'm actually changing the content of the website from my own computer. Some of the cons of dynamic sites is one, they're less secure than a static site. So whenever you're dealing with a dynamic website, whenever you're dealing with, uh, especially like taking user input or you know interacting with users, there's always the chance that someone's gonna try to do something bad, especially if you're dealing with a database. I mean, if you think that your database is completely secure, look at companies whose databases get hacked every day. I mean, these are huge companies. And that doesn't mean that it's gonna happen to you, but it means that it's a possibility. Dynamic sites are also traditionally slower than static sites. I mean, think about it. Like when the user goes to the web server, the web server has to build the entire website. So obviously it's gonna take a little bit longer than just handing out the website. I mean, going back to that pizza example, it's a lot quicker for you to just grab a frozen pizza out of your fridge than to order the pizza, have to go pick it up, and then bring it home. Dynamic websites can also be a little bit harder to set up. I mean, there's a lot of configuration that needs to go on in the servers. Not to mention you have to have a server that's capable of hosting your dynamic website. And depending on which language it's written in or which software it uses, it could be different. And finally, they can be a little bit expensive. Now, this is gonna range depending on the complexity and the power of your site, but at the high end, dynamic sites can be very expensive to maintain, especially if you have to run a bunch of different servers to handle all of your traffic. So static sites and dynamic sites both have pros and cons. And I would say that the pros of one doesn't outweigh the cons of another. They're just different. There's no, there's never gonna be a consensus like, oh, static sites are better or dynamic sites are better. It's really what's best for you. And I think what happens to a lot of people is they end up adding a huge layer of complexity in order to make their site dynamic when really they could do 99% of what they wanna do with a static website. So there's lots of things you can do. I always hear people say like, well, I want comments on my website, so it has to be dynamic. 
well, why can't you just use like a comments plugin and then have your website as static? Or it even goes the other way where people, you know, they don't understand that like in order to have a website that's fully interactive and that stores data and allows users to update that data, that you need to be running code on the server. Like you just need a dynamic site. So you really want to keep all of these things in mind when you're deciding which site you want to build. Here's my advice. Err on the side of caution. In other words, don't build a dynamic site and don't decide to make your site dynamic unless you absolutely have to. Now, obviously in a lot of cases, you're gonna want a dynamic site for sure. But I think also in a lot of cases, people make their websites more complex than they need to be. You can do a lot with just a static site and using like external plugins and external software. Let someone else handle all the dynamic elements. Like you can use a comments plugin or you can use an external service to sign up for email lists. Don't just jump right into a dynamic site because you think it's cool. Trust me, the people who are building these awesome dynamic sites are people who have a lot of experience doing these things. I mean, these are like seasoned developers. So my advice to you would be err on the side of caution when creating a dynamic site just because it adds a huge layer of complexity that you might not want. But if you are gonna build your dynamic site, you need to make sure that you secure it properly, that you set up your database properly, and that you figure out the right way to host it without losing tons of money on hosting costs. So that's sort of an overview of static versus dynamic websites. I hope you learned something and I hope you've got a little more clarity into making the decision about what type of website to build. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.